What's going on, everybody? Donnie Chocolate here, the barbershop professor, um, coming at you with another one. Uh, today, today's class, we're going to talk a little bit about your boy, Hakeem Jeffries, and your boy's Hakeem Jeffries' uncle. And there's a couple of things that come to mind when it comes to the whole th this whole thing, right? Now, I've read up on some of the things that his uncle said... Um, but I must admit, I have not dug deep enough to actually read his transcripts, what he said, and different things like that. What I will say is I'm anti-anti. Any type of, like, hate or anything like that, um, you know, I, I just, I think points could be made without doing all that, right? That being said, um, I do believe people... Or put it like this, I do believe the truth can offend people, right? The truth can offend people, right? I'll talk about education more, but we were seeing this, right, with people with the truth offending people. So they don't want to teach certain subjects and certain things, right? Because the truth offends people, right? So um, even though I'm anti-hate, anti anti like i said that doesn't mean that i'm also anti truth because i think there are some uncomfortable truths that that are just information is out there right you can get you can do your own research i'm not here to tell you nothing so i will speak vaguely about that <clears throat> what i'm not going to speak vaguely of is the double standard that black people have on their families right so i was thinking to myself in the car well one as far as black people go we all got one we all got the uncle the auntie that's politically incorrect that uh that uh is super conservative and different things like that and so i was thinking about that in my head, like, okay, we all got an uncle now. I know Hakeem Jeffries in his college days defended his uncle, right? Um, so there's something different, and we'll talk about that later too. Um, but at the same time, I thought to myself, if this person were, were white, if white people had to go through a process where they could not be in contact with someone who was either racist, discriminatory, um, who was, there would be no white politicians, right? So why is it that the white politicians are just absolved of any of this scrutiny when it comes to their backgrounds, when it comes to their heritage, you know, we all know a lot of them, uh, a lot of them have a heritage where their ancestors were slave owners and more stuff. Right. If you're from the South, the Confederacy. Right. All those different things. Right. Don't even matter. But when a black politician. And his, or when a black top politician's uncle says some stuff that some people don't like, then. He's subject to scrutiny. I think that's something that we really got to think about. I also think uh, politics in general, right? Back to defending his uncle, right? I wish I had the article, <clears throat> but um, man, I I had an article here, so y'all just gonna have to bear with me as far as him defending his uncle, right? From what I've read, right? Hakeem Jeffries was not defending any bigotry or xenophobia of any type, right? What he was defending was um, some of his uncle's statements on masculinity, right? Uh, now, that can easily go down into one of those anti-discussions, right? Where it's going to be anti-LGBTQ. I, I think you can promote masculinity without, like, chastising or demeaning or um, disrespecting anyone else's, you know, lifestyle. You can do that. You can you can uplift masculinity and still support people who do live differently. Like it, that's, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't have to be 
in a silo. It doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't have to be black and white, uh, black or white. So when it comes to to that, this is why it is so hard for black people to be, not to be politicians, but I'll say for black people to be effective politicians for the black community. Our truths will always be inconvenient to the status quo, right? Again, our truths will always be inconvenient to the status quo, right? The, um, when it comes to, um, the drug policies, right? When it comes to Joe Biden's, uh, three strikes, uh, or anti-crime bill, right? That's very, that's very inconvenient to the status quo, right? When it comes to, uh, um, when it comes to, uh, voting in this, in this, right? Uh, in this country, right? The history of oppression is very inconvenient to the status quo. When it comes to the atrocities that have been committed to us, even after slavery, right? We're talking redlining. There's discriminatory uh, uh, practices in healthcare. All those things, right, are very inconvenient to the status quo. And what's even more inconvenient is the expectation that they should repair reparations repair that harm, right? So this is why it is so hard for black politicians to actually serve the black African-American community. Dare I say, it is impossible for politicians to reach higher levels, right? The highest levels, as high as minority speaker, right? As high as the president of the United States, right? To actually be effective and be targeted when it comes to improving and, uh, and, and assisting the black community here in America. All right. So, um, before I leave you, I want to, I want to leave you with this local politics, Local politics, local politics, local politics. Get involved in local politics. These are the people who you can um, invest your time in. I don't believe in investing money in politics. I think money should be out of politics. But if that's what you do, go ahead and invest your money in them. That's fine. But local politics, I'm talking school board members, city council members, some of y'all who are my, my rural folks, my rural black people who live in, you know, places like Rolling Fork, Mississippi, where my mama grew up and stuff like that. Shouts out to them. Like y'all can take over a government. Now, I know there's stuff happening in Jackson, Mississippi, where they're trying to do it. Right. They're trying to uh, subvert that and 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 take, you know a government from the majority rule or the people, the citizenry that it actually has in that town. And we have to start from somewhere. Make sure you're paying attention to your local politicians, your local politics, run for office locally, maybe. Maybe that makes sense for you, right? Local politics are going to be the thing that actually help transform the black community here in the United States. With that being said, um, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff, all that good stuff. Uh, this is Donnie Chocolate here, the Barbershop Professor. I'm out.